Last week, the Supreme Court ruled 3-2 to two in favor of Massey Energy in a decision that relieved the company of $76 million in damages. It was a complicated case in which a company called Harmon Mining claimed that Massey illegally forced it out of business. This case gained a lot of attention in part because Massey Energy CEO Don Blankenship spent about $3 million in 2004 in efforts to elect Justice Brent Benjamin to the bench. Benjamin ruled in favor of Massey in this case, although the court's decision was still very critical of Massey's actions. Hugh Caperton, the owner of Harmon Mining, says Blankenship got his money's worth. We have a, uh, we have a court that is politicized, and that is something that we're, we've, we've lived with for years and years and years, but it's gotten worse. And when we have people running around spending $3 million on, on uh, court, Supreme Court races, certainly that has to sway uh, decisions in the Supreme Court, uh, especially if those justices don't recuse themselves. But we will, we will petition for a rehearing, and uh, we think that we can, we think that we will bring uh, to light some, some issues that should have been brought to light in the first, first time, uh, in, in this case. Um, we're concerned about, um, we're concerned about Justice Maynard's relationship with Don Blankenship. We know that they are, they are close friends. And so having, having two of the votes that go against you come from one, a close personal friend of Don Blankenship's, and two, a justice who received the benefit of Don Blankenship's three million dollar spending spree on the Supreme Court race, uh, certainly gives me, gives me pause, and it should give every citizen pause as to if really justice was, was done here. Blankenship issued a brief statement about the ruling saying, we have always believed that the verdict in the lower court was wrong, and we have fought hard to get a fair result for Massey Energy's members and shareholders. But there's a lot more going on concerning the Supreme Court. Joining us now from Morgantown to discuss this case and other issues concerning the court is Dan Ringer, the host of The Law Works on West Virginia PBS. Dan, welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you, Beth. First question, we and other media have been pointing out Blankenship's relationship and ties to Benjamin through his funding of a campaign that supported Benjamin's efforts to become a Supreme Court justice. Is it fair to do so? Oh, sure, it's fair to talk about it because this is America. We can talk about all of those things. The question is, how much weight do you assign to the fact that Blankenship supported Benjamin in an election, and quite significantly? Well, you know, in a political process, and the election of Supreme Court justices is a political process, you have people who are for you and you have people who are for someone else and perhaps even against you. I don't think you can automatically assume that just because someone was a campaign supporter and perhaps a monetary supporter that decisions are going to be made purely on that basis. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens when a person becomes a judge or in this case a justice of the Supreme Court is they go through a process where they literally start to become a judge. They think like a judge, they act like a judge, they talk like a judge or justice. Uh, I haven't seen anything in any of the opinions coming out of the Supreme Court in the last several months that causes me to think that anybody is acting out of impure motives or out of a political or a particular bias. Mm -hmm. But it seems Mr. Blankenship's $3 million investment saved him a $76 million damage claim. Only if that's the reason the decision came out the way it did. The, the simple fact of the matter is Justice Benjamin's votes, only 20 percent of the votes that are cast in any particular case. Uh, so he might be the swing vote or a deciding vote in some cases, but it takes at least two other justices to agree with him uh, for the decision to come out that way. Does the law community perceive this ruling as a shift in the court, some kind of shift in the court? I think we, we as a community, I obviously can't speak for everyone, but I, th I think there's a perception that the court has become somewhat more conservative or business oriented, if you will, over the last several months, uh, certainly since Justice Benjamin went on the court. Mm -hmm. 
it, we were by reputation, or we had by reputation, a very liberal Supreme Court through the 70s and the 80s. Decisions, if they were assigned to labor or business, tended to be thought of as labor decisions. Now we're seeing a change in opinion. It's probably because of who the justices are. Each person comes to the bench when they become a judge or a justice and they decide cases based on their skill, expertise, experience, and personal biases and prejudices. When we say biases and prejudices, those are not necessarily negative terms. They're simply the values that we have that cause us to think about things in certain ways. Judges have them and judges have opinions opinions uh, based on them every day in, mm -hmm. in every matter. What was your gut reaction when you heard about this ruling, Dan? <laughs> I thought Massey saved a lot of money and Harmon Cole wasn't going to get as much as they thought they were headed for. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move I, I, on. Beth, yeah. there, there, well, let, let me get back. There's a tendency to want to say that something wrong happened here. and. I, as an attorney, I looked at it and I, I didn't have that reaction. I wasn't surprised that a court that uh, I thought of as being more pro-business than in past times made a decision like that, but I want to read the opinion to find out why. As you say, it's a complex case. I've only scanned it. I don't know what the details uh, are of it.